Does Acts 5.32 support lordship, lordship salvation? Acts 5.32 reads, And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. Um, actually, I think I would like to read this a little bit more, a little bit more expanded version of that verse because, um, so let me, re let me read it that way. Let me read a couple of verses be uh, before it. it says, but Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey, that's the key word, obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Him God has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are, are his witnesses of these things, and so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. Um, and I think, again, the, uh, I think, it, again, look at the context. The context is, you know, Peter's before uh, the Sanhedrin in Jerusalem. And had just preached to them the death and resurrection of Christ, which he which he had just done in in, in uh, Acts two and three, and uh, Peter charged the Sanhedrin and and the Jewish nation at large corporately of being guilty of murdering Christ. Um, that's the that's the immediate context. So the situation the situation was okay. You got you killed Christ, and the solution is repentance, which is a, a synonym. For faith, um, so the the a couple things here where it says um, in five thirty one where it says uh, him God has exalted to a right hand to be prince and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Again, some people would like to teach oh uh, faith is a gift from God or repentance is a gift from God. Um, so, so, so that's what Calvinists it's a it's a tenet of Calvinism is that God gives you the faith to believe. Um, and if you don't believe, if those who don't believe, uh, it, well, they're, they're, they can't really be blamed because God never gave them the faith to believe in the first place. So it takes all accountability off a of man and makes God a monster, and, and there's all kinds of problems with that. Um, and again, in, in the the expression to give repentance to Israel doesn't mean that God gave the gave Israel um, faith or uh, you know uh, uh, repentance. It's really the opportunity. It gave them the opportunity to believe. It gave them the opportunity to put place their faith in Christ. That's the whole, that's the whole idea of, of the gospel presentation. You should give someone the opportunity to believe and receive eternal life. Um, and so again, the obey, obedience there is just like I mentioned in the previous uh, verse with Colossians is that um, being blameless, Paul said that he was blameless. You know, he said, I think it was the Romans, you know, in according, I'm paraphrasing, but he said, according to the law, he was blameless. It doesn't mean he kept the law perfectly because even he refuted that no man could keep that law. But what it meant is that he, he he did his best, you know. He, he he didn't. He did his best to keep it, and he continued in it. You know, he continued, and in fact, he even said that he was a Pharisee of Pharisees. So he kept it quite well and tried to advance himself in it, just like we should grow ourselves in Christ. And so the obedience of the law again was keeping the law. Well, obedience under the new covenant is faith. The whole premise of the old covenant is obedience by works. The new covenant is all about obedience through faith, and the obedience again is just. Um, uh, accepting it, accepting and re recognizing the truth, acknowledging, submitting yourself to God's righteousness it, from a from the from the perspective of not uh you know not trying to say it's lordship salvation where you you submit yourself in terms of your whole life and your your whole your 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 will and everything else. Uh, those are good things, but that's not going to save anyone. The the submit submission there is recognizing that you're not righteous, you have a serious problem, you're under condemnation, and only God is righteous, and so um, you choose to believe and receive his righteousness uh, by faith, through faith. And so again, the, the obedience there in Acts 5, 32, um, is, again, notice the, uh, the the idea is, it's about, it, it, you see the word obey coupled with the word repentance, which re the word repentance is, is, is another word for believe, so Obey and believe are synonyms. The Bible is is repetitive that way. Like I see that all all throughout the Bible, will we're in the same sentence or within two sentences, it says the same thing essentially twice, choosing different words uh, for a couple of reasons. One is to uh, be redundant because we are stupid uh, humans. <laughs> we're we're, we're uh, you know the flesh is stubborn and stiff necked, and we need to be re told things twice and uh, multiple times. Um, 
And also, too, is that I believe so that people can't hijack a word. So people would, uh, in fact, I've seen a lot of evidence people hijacking words and try to give infuse those words with meaning that they never that were never intended. So, for example, the word uh, anathema in the Bible, people will try to infuse that with meaning, like meaning eternally condemned to hell, which it means nothing like that at all. Uh, it just simply means being set aside or not not part of your covenant. Essentially, it's not part of your program. Um, and I and again, that's. Uh, what I was saying earlier with with, the, with regards to the word blameless under the law to be blameless essentially you had to continue in it and just like if you to be blameless in His sight under the gospel of, of, of grace through faith is to continue to have 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 that faith continue it in the gospel continue believing it that's all it is um, and so um, very similar here is that again the word obey is just another word for faith and you see that in other verses too like for example. Um, um, Second Th- Thessalonians, uh, one verses, Second Th- Second Thessalonians, chapter one, verses eight through ten. It says, "In a flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God, and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. There, these shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power when He comes in that day to be glorified." in his saints, and to be admired among all those who believe. So it tells you right there, those who believe are those who obey. Because your testimony, I'm sorry, because our testimony was, among you was believed. And again, people try to hijack that word obey, but again, the Bible is redundant to, to, so that people can't hijack it. And if we would just read the Bible in context carefully and not allow uh, the, the, these false teachings in fear to 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 cloud our understanding and interpretation, I think the Bible is very clear and, and beautiful and just full of grace. Um, and so I, I think, uh, and I'll, by the way, to this, with regards to that word obey, it's used, that particular word obey in, five, in uh, Acts 5.32 is used four other times. Uh, it's also used in Acts 27.21 where it says, but after long abstinence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, men, you should have listened. That's the word obey. So basically, obey there basically means heed or listen. I would say heed, essentially. Um, and not have sailed from Crete and incurred the disaster and loss. Uh, it's in Titus uh, 3, chapter, uh, chapter, Titus chapter 3, verses 1 through 2. Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities and to obey to heed these uh, rulers and authorities, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil to one, e- e- speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. So again, it essentially means heed. Um, and again, the only thing that we, the covenant we're under is all based on faith, not works. So the obedience there is simply to continue to believe or exercise that initial belief. Once you exercise that initial belief, you are forever considered by God. You hold the title eternally as a believer, an overcomer, a saint, a child of God. These are these are things, these are permanent titles you have forever. You're no longer an accursed child, a, 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 a child, a child of wrath, a, a children of disobedience. Um, uh, so the, these are all things that, again, the Bible can be a little bit difficult to understand because it doesn't con, uh, always conform to our, our modern day conventions. And the Bible really does interpret itself. And so that's why I think the Bible says, do not lean on your own understanding, but lean on God's understanding. He defines his terms. He gives you his understanding through his word, through his spirit. And um, that's why I think it's so important that, again, there's many people. Uh, Second Peter uh, says that there's, I can't remember Second Peter Jude, who says there are many who, uh, who twist the scriptures to their own ruin. Um, because they're all untaught, unstable, and even P- Peter himself admits that some scriptures are hard to understand. And I think the reason they're hard to understand is because you can't lean on your own understanding. You gotta let the Bible interpret itself. And the word obey, for example, when we think of obey, we don't think of faith immediately. We think of, uh, you know, obedience to works. Um, so again, it's extremely important to allow the Bible to interpret itself and let the context speak to itself. Allow the Holy Spirit to hold your hand as you read the, at his, read his word. And, and I think he'll show you these things. Okay. All right. Thank you, uh, Sister Renee. Can you yeah. add anything to that? Yeah. Amen to that. Uh, everything he said, 
But it, it never ceases to amaze me the hiding holes self-righteousness will look for. Those that obey him. And anybody that self-righteous looks at that and goes, see, you got to keep the law. You got to live the good life. He only says them that obey him. That's where they go to the law. It's where they go. But there's a reason the word obey here was used. Okay. If you go up a couple of verses, all right, we're at 32. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that obey him. Why did they, why do you use that word? All right. Well, if you go up a couple more verses, it says, <coughs> then came one of them saying, behold, the men who you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching people. They've been forbidden to preach Jesus by these these uh, leaders of the, the Jewish temple. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence for they feared the people. Their only reason they didn't beat or grab the apostles is because they were scared the, the, the public would turn against them. For they feared the people lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council and the high priest asked them, saying, did we not straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. And the next thing he says, two verses down is, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Him has God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So to turn uh, to Christ in faith, their Messiah, to forgive their sins. And we are as witness of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost whom God has given to them that obey him, not man. So he's saying that it's, because he already said it's better to obey God than man. You tell us that we can't preach in the name of Jesus to the people, but he has sent us specifically to preach Jesus to his people. It's an offer of repentance for Israel. One more time, you crucified him who is both Lord and Christ, but one more time, we're going to give repentance to Israel. Turn to believe the truth of who Jesus is. He's your promised Savior. You nailed him to the cross, but he's Lord and Christ. So repent and believe on Jesus. And by the way, we're going to obey him. Meaning we're going to preach the gospel because God told us to. We don't care that you, a man, regardless of your religious standing, is telling us not to preach. So the word obey there is used, I believe, because specifically he's saying, who should I heed, God or man? Am I going to obey God or man? If man tells me I can't preach the good news of Jesus's death, burial, and resurrection for the forgiveness of sin for the nation of Israel, and God tells me I have to preach it, who do I listen to? I'm going to obey him. So the obedience there is not, is believing absolutely but the reason the word obey is used is because he had to choose who to obey these self-righteous pharisees who forbid him to preach jesus or god who commanded them to preach jesus they obeyed him okay all right thank you well there's really not anything I can add to that. Um, I, I don't remember if this is the right uh, context. I, I think it is based upon the additional reading you did, Renee. But uh, to me, it, it's a very, very important. The um, uh, the point that Peter made uh, to James and the Jerusalem church regarding um, uh, his, his response to, uh, hey, are you are, what's wrong with you peter this was the point they're making what's wrong with you you went into the home of a gentile cornelius and not only that you ate with them and not only that you ate gentile food what is world is wrong with you that's not permitted 
Uh, so the, the Jews and the Gentiles were, were segregated. Um, the, even in the beginning of the church there, there, there was, uh, they believed that uh, uh, the, the gospel was not for the Gentiles, it's only for the Jews, only for Israel. And so God revealed first to Peter. You know, we, we talk a lot about Paul. Uh, we did a thing about the um, Paul onlyism uh, last week, I think, was, was the subject. And, and then there's another extreme faction on the other end of the spectrum that, that are, well, they're, uh, they're not Paul only us at all. Matter of fact, they're saying, never listen to Paul. Paul's a false teacher. You need to be only the red letters, only the words of Jesus matter. So you, you have fanatics or uh, hyper views, extreme views in, in both directions on these things. But, um, the reason this is subject so important to me is because I, I'm almost single-handedly the, the only one I know of that's made videos against Paul onlyism uh, besides me is um, uh, Brother David Benjamin in Christ. Uh, now he and I disagree on some dispensational issues, but uh, on, the, on the gospel and, and, and also his view on. Uh, what, what was going on with James and, and uh, that, at that time, he has a, a playlist called James Trouble that I recommend. It's kind of like a parallel playlist to, to my, my uh, playlist titled um, uh, James and Paul, the, the Shocking Facts. But uh, the, the point is that um, Peter was told directly by God to go to the Gentile home of Cornelius. And, 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 uh, and then he was told that Nothing's unclean. That, that not only applied to the food, but it also applies to the people. The Gentiles are not unclean. You can associate with them. You need to. So the first apostle to the Gentiles was not Paul, as, as mo the hyper-dispensationalists would, would claim. Uh, he's not only the first, they say, but he's the only apostle to the Gentiles. That you can't learn anything from Peter or John or even Jesus himself, you have to learn only from Paul. That's how crazy they, they, they are, how far they, they take that error. But in this case, Peter is standing up to James in the Jerusalem church. They, they're reprimanding him for going to the Gentile home and eating with them. And he says, I'm going to do what God says, not what man says. I'm going to obey God. I was told by God. And then he gives an account of what happened. I, I told them the gospel. They believed it's just like we did. They believed, and matter of fact, the term believe on the Lord Jesus, Jesus is first stated at that point of scripture, not in Acts uh, 16. So he said they believe on the Lord Jesus, and they received, uh, and then I forgot what he said exactly about, uh, but they said the same thing happened with us, which means that there was the, the whole, at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came down on him, and he saw the same thing happen in Cornelius' home. So he said, these things are, God spoke to me, and then God proved it by uh, this uh, uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit that he witnessed. Um, so that's really the context of all of this, he's saying that he, he's going to believe, he's going to obey God, not men. Even if it's James and the Jerusalem church, he's going to go with what God said. All right, any more on that, or do you want to go to the next question? I just want to remind people what Ben said. Uh, obey in the new covenant is to believe. Obey the gospel is to stand on who Jesus is and what he's done. That is what it, it means to obey the gospel. But people, when you hear the word obey, like he pointed out, they always go to their works. Obeying is doing. And so they'll go, see, you got to obey the command. They, they, don't, they don't keep them. Someone was saying in the chat room, they were saying, see, you got to obey, you got to obey the commandments. They just condemn themselves. They have not, will not ever keep the law perfectly, but they need to trust in the one who did, and that's obeying the gospel. So uh, try to uh, recognize in your own mind when you read into things that are not there. And uh, we, we are all guilty of doing that, of reading into things that aren't present in the verse our preconceived ideas of and connotations of words. So it's important to 
know the context of when it says obey. That that's the key there. 